This year, a new opportunity has emerged for your listening audience. A new approach to the real-world problems of day-to-day -day dental practice. Dr. David Ahern, after more than a decade of study, concluded that most practitioners, while well-versed in the understanding of how to perform dental procedures, have little or no training regarding the overall process or workflow of a productive dental practice. Evidence of this problem abounds in the typical dental office. It makes hygiene and doctor rooms. How many folks you got in an office that some doctor rooms? Where are they? They're over here, right? Where's the hygiene rooms? They're on me somewhere, right? Hygienists, how many hygienists here? Doctor, could you please come and check my patient? Doctor, doctor, please come visit my patient. <laughs> Now, we go to the ghetto, and then we wonder, while we're over here doing all the doctor stuff, why the hygienist is sometimes mad at us. Well, we never go visit. Staff members enjoy his understanding of their needs, leading to greater acceptance of the concepts discussed in the lecture. His common sense wisdom simplifies many aspects of dental practice. How long is it going to take to sort of nationally known consultant? Uh, how long is it going to take to get that room ready for the next patient? Broken down, everything put away, disinfect all the surfaces, get it reset. Might as well burn that. <laughs> or, or somebody's not getting lunch. <laughs> Has anybody here ever muttered the words or heard the words, you know, I do all the work in sterilization. She doesn't really. <laughs> You've never heard that, doctor. You've never heard that. Here's the bad news for doctors. And staff, you don't have doctors here. Be nice to them. But we created the problem. Lecture topics range from staff-focused material on improving office performance to dental team health, office ergonomics, and to entire office design for productivity. So now let's talk about the specifics of how to posture. We didn't talk about this yesterday. Traditional four-handed, ideally, that's what you are. You usually don't see that. There's going to be some tipping, hopefully less torque. I would suggest if you can find a seat with a better waterfall on the nose than virtually every chair you find upstairs. This chair doesn't show the waterfall, but if you can get a waterfall sloped to the front of the chair, then you can get the chair up a little higher. Because what it allows you to do is tripod. You get some of the weight on your butt, and you get some of the weight on your feet. In martial arts, what do you want to do? You want to balance. You want to spread the weight. Because if you can spread that weight some, you can go ahead and then take a lot of stress off your back. And your back can then elevate. Your back doesn't have to work to support your posture. The spine is really made to extend, not to compress. Doctors like his clear nuts and bolts approach to his subjects. Somehow we were taught to believe that if an assistant were standing, it was because of a deficiency. Postural stresses are lower standing. If you've got a six foot four doctor and a five foot tall assistant, your best combination may be for much of the day to have a standing assistant. It's heresy, I know it's heresy. But postural loading's less. You can get closer to the field because now you, you don't have any belly bar issue. You've got good mobility. There are some advantages and disadvantages. There are certainly disadvantages if you're doing a root canal, standing there and your dentist is slow. You might fall asleep and fall over. <laughs> but, but there are two other ways to do this. Your next meeting needs a new and exciting speaker, a dentist who performs at the top level of professional practice, one who can clearly and concisely communicate practical and invaluable advice to your audience. Front desk. Third area of bottlenecking is the front desk. Now, one of the things we didn't mention about bottlenecking is you're going to bottleneck somewhere. If you're growing, you're going to bottleneck somewhere. And the issue isn't to be mad that you're bottlenecked. Treatment rooms are inefficient. Sterilization is inefficient. Front desk is inefficient. It's to go ahead and know that when you fix one and grow to the next level, you're going to break one of the other ones. 
So every now and then somebody does a bad enough job of fixing treatment room that you come back and bottleneck that again. But usually, that, that means you messed up when you redid that. Usually you're going to break open one, increase the flow there, and then you're going to have some trouble somewhere else. That's normal in manufacturing as you grow. Your job is to know that since it's going to happen, get ahead, get ready for the next bottleneck. If you want to look at non-value adding, this is non-value adding. This is front desk. This is the kind of thing that you see in terms of bottleneck. Does this, does this make anybody any money? No. Does this make any patient happy? No. If you were at the Marriott and you were standing in a line like that checking out, you've already been there, you've already stayed, you know, how much does it cost to stay at a hotel here? 200 bucks, 150 bucks. You spent $1,000 on crown or whatever, and now you've got to stand in line while you're numb? I don't think that's reasonable. Dr. Ahern's schedule limits the number of speaking engagements he will accept over the next two years. It is important that you contact him now to learn how your venue will benefit from his powerful, practice-transforming message.